The start of 2024 has been marked by a wave of increasingly pessimistic forecasts for China's economy. While the Chinese government remains optimistic, the International Monetary Fund projects that GDP growth will slow to 4.6% this year from 5.4% in 2023. On the other hand, Chinese stock market losses are expected to continue after share prices fell to their lowest level in five years. China's growing economic slowdown is spreading around the world. What would be the impact of the slowdown on the world? How would its major trading partners react? Let's analyze the situation. New economic indicators revealed by the Chinese government paint a picture of an economy that's still struggling to find its footing after the COVID-19 pandemic, even though it exceeded the modest growth target set by the central government. According to data released earlier this year by the National Bureau of Statistics, the Chinese economy grew by 5.2% in 2023. However, the same report reveals that the country still suffers from persistent deflation, an ongoing crisis in its real estate market, high youth unemployment, and a long-term demographic decline. Still, the fact that the Chinese economy is going through a quasi-deflationary period, with the Consumer Price Index and Producer Price Index in negative territory, allows policymakers to introduce significant fiscal stimulus to boost economic growth without having to worry about inflation, at least in the short term. Considering these deflationary pressures, the People's Bank of China should ease monetary policy and set its inflation target at 3 to 4 percent. Recognizing the endogeneity of the money supply, the bank should place greater emphasis on interest rates as a short-term macroeconomic tool, rather than directing financial resources to specific industries and enterprises. These figures come just days after a report revealed that China's exports had declined by 4.6% in 2023, the first year-on-year -year drop since 2016. The government attempted to put a positive spin on the data by arguing the following. The national economy witnessed recovery momentum, supply and demand improved steadily, transformation and upgrades advanced solidly, employment and prices were generally stable, people's welfare was solid, and with effective guarantees, steady progress was made in the pursuit of high-quality development, and the major targets set were well achieved. However, the financial markets were not convinced. Major stock indexes tracking Chinese companies plunged in January this year with the Hang Seng China Enterprises Index losing nearly 4%. The index is down 11% since the end of 2023, and 27% year over year. So in this video, we're going to analyze the significant impact that the real estate crisis brings to China's economic slowdown, and how this can generate repercussions internationally. Let's get started. The real estate sector accounts for about 15% of China's GDP, but indirectly contributes more than 30%. It also accounts for 20% of urban employment and has been the most important investment vehicle among the population, accounting for around 70% of total household assets, according to Mali Chivakul, emerging markets economist at J. Safra Saracen Sustainable AM. But the crisis at Evergrande and the more recent country garden revealed the limits of a sector that has become a headache. When Evergrande, once the country's leading real estate company, went into default in 2021, it began to reveal the first cracks in the sector. The government at the time tightened access to bank financing for developers with a high level of debt. Under the Xi Jinping government slogan, housing is for living in, not for speculation. In August 2023, Evergrande officially declared bankruptcy in the USA to avoid the seizure of its assets. This was joined by Country Garden, the country's leading developer which at the end of August announced losses of more than $6.56 billion in the first half of 2023. These are not isolated cases. According to Bloomberg, of the 38 state-owned property developers registered in Hong Kong and mainland China, 18 have announced losses in the first half of the year. The property crisis is important for the country's financial stability, as debt related to the sector accounts for around 25% of bank assets and about half is related to local governments. Municipal governments, which used to derive their main source of income from the sale of land for new housing development, are now heavily indebted. In addition, unfinished buildings worry home buyers who have paid in advance and at the same time alienate potential buyers, undermining confidence in the sector. The data bear this out. Sales are down 30%, and new construction has fallen 60% since 2021. Home prices have also fallen by 10 to 20% in many cities, according to Goldman Sachs. So far, the responses have been short-term. 
the regime has boosted housing demand by easing restrictions on buying a home through a cut in the minimum down payment for first-time buyers to 20% and to 30% for second-time buyers. In addition, the interest rate on existing first-home mortgages was reduced. Along with real estate, the other major risk lies in banking due to the lack of liquidity. In mid-2023, one of the largest asset managers in the country, with considerable exposure to the real estate sector, informed its investors of the need to restructure its debt and stopped paying investors. It's estimated that these entities moved around $3 billion in China. International authorities are bracing for a hit to their companies as Chinese imports decline. Here's a look at how China's slowdown is being reflected in economies and financial markets. And hey, if you're liking this video, I invite you to like and subscribe to the channel. This would be rewarding for us. Let's continue. Global investors have already pulled more than $10 billion out of China's stock markets, with most of that amount sold in blue chip stocks. China's economy was supposed to drive one third of global economic growth this year, so its dramatic slowdown in recent months is setting off alarm bells around the world. Officials are bracing for a blow to their economies as Chinese imports of everything from building materials to electronics decline. Caterpillar Incorporated says Chinese demand for machines used on construction sites is worse than previously thought. U.S. President Joe Biden called the economic problems a ticking time bomb. Goldman Sachs Group Incorporated and Morgan Stanley have cut their targets for Chinese stocks, with the former also warming of contagion risks to the rest of the region. Asian economies are taking the biggest hit to their trade so far, along with African countries. In July last year, Japan reported its first drop in exports in more than two years after China cut its purchases of cars and chips. Central bankers in South Korea and Thailand cited China's weak recovery a week earlier for downgrading their growth forecasts. However, it's not all doom and gloom. China's slowdown will drag down global oil prices, and deflation in the country means that prices of goods shipped around the world are falling. This is a boon for countries like the US and the UK that are still struggling with high inflation. Some emerging markets like India also see opportunities, hoping to attract foreign investment that may be leaving China's shores. But as the world's second largest economy, a prolonged slowdown in China will hurt, rather than help the rest of the world. An analysis by the International Monetary Fund shows just how much is at stake. When China's growth rate rises by one percentage point, the global expansion is boosted by about 0.3 percentage points. China's deflation is not such a bad thing for the global economy. Peter Berezin, chief global strategist at BCA Research Incorporated, said in an interview on Bloomberg TV, but if the rest of the world, the US and Europe, fall into recession, if China remains weak, then that would be a problem not just for China, but for the entire global economy. The discouraging economic data suggests challenges ahead for China. China's Communist Party says it will keep its economic growth target at 5% this year. All this while the country is going through its biggest real estate crisis ever known, an increase in public debt, whose figure is totally opaque, a rise in urban unemployment, especially among young people, and rampant deflation. Even so, Experts do not believe that China will be able to meet its growth targets this year. In a Bloomberg survey of 27 economists on the target set by the Communist Party of China, they conclude that it's possible that a growth target similar to last year's could be announced, but it'll be more difficult to achieve given a higher base of comparison, they reiterate. Thus, the IMF expects GDP growth to slow to 4.6% this year, according to its November forecast. The institution assured that this slowdown in 2024 will be due to the persistent risks of the fall of the real estate sector and the weakened external demand. While the government's top priority in 2024 is to boost economic growth and restore economic confidence, China must also contend with high local government debt and an ongoing liquidity crisis in the real estate sector that, if left unaddressed, could escalate into a full-blown debt crisis. Fortunately, the Chinese government has the financial resources it needs to meet these challenges ahead. The People's Bank of China will have the opportunity to take action to counter deflationary pressures and boost lending. Economists surveyed by Bloomberg generally expect the central bank to cut its one-year policy lending rate by 10 basis points to 2.4%. They also see policymakers injecting more cash into the financial system. That probably won't be enough to fix things, although economists expect the central bank to take other steps to boost growth, such as cutting the amount of cash banks must hold in reserve. Fiscal support is also at stake, as the country's finance minister has signaled that government spending will increase. 
by implementing expansionary fiscal and monetary policies and seeking to implement relevant reforms, China would surely be well positioned to reverse its 10-year economic slowdown in 2024 and maintain robust growth in the years ahead. Now I ask you who are watching this video, do you think China will manage to end this year with positive results in its economy? Let me know your answer in the comments box. And if you like this video, I invite you to subscribe and leave your like for more videos like this one. We'll see you next time.